In this episode of the Dr. E Show, we explore the fascinating and some say controversial topic of breatharianism. This idea that some people, such as certain yogis or qigong masters, may be able to cultivate such high energy states that they can go for long periods with little or no physical food. Full disclaimer: This episode is not here to suggest anybody stop eating. Please do not engage in prolonged fasting without careful research and preparation and professional supervision. Please always safety first. Hello, this is Dr. Edith Ubuntu Chan. Welcome to the Dr. E Show. A show exploring the frontiers of our human possibilities in areas like health and wellness, science and spirituality, quantum biology, and conscious living, so that together we can awaken the best of ourselves and create our most joyful and fulfilling lives. If you've been listening to this show for a while now, chances are that you're a pioneer in your community. You're someone who thinks often about how to break free from the mold, break free from old limitations, break free from the so-called matrix. Well, I have a very, very special treat for you today. Someone whose life is the very example and embodiment of this kind of freedom. So, please close all your other apps and turn up the volume because my guest today is world-renowned qigong and meditation master. Ellie Tom El Amin. Ellie Tom is perhaps best known as an American trailblazer in something called breatharianism, or pranic living. He has mastered the art and science of living directly on qi, light, or prana, without the need for physical food. Full disclaimer: This interview is not here to recommend anybody stop eating. Of course. So please do not engage in prolonged fasting without careful preparation and professional supervision. Instead, Ellie Tom's example and teachings open us to brand new possibilities in the magic and wonder of life. Today, Ellie Tom travels all around the world, sharing his unique blend of wisdom, healing technology, laughter, and humor, bursting hearts and minds open everywhere he goes. So please help me in welcoming the author of "It's Okay to Be Healthy" and "Human Photosynthesis 101," the man who has the most awesome and infectious laugh I have ever heard, the one, the only Ellie Tom Elamine. Yay! Welcome, Ellie Tom. <laughs> hey, hi there. I'm so glad on that great introduction you gave. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do my best to fulfill. <laughs> well. <laughs> So some of our audience have heard of you, of course, but some of us are new to you. Could you please give us an introduction? How a guy from Ohio, who grew up in a family that ate lots of heavy soul food, became a qigong master that lives on light. Tell us about your background, and your journey. Oh, absolutely. Well, this particular journey started because of health problems. I found myself on the standard American diet. And I began to keep gaining weight. However, everybody in my reality was overweight, so I thought it was normal. But then again, there's something inside me say, "You know better than this. You're too young to be like this in this type of condition." Yeah. So I began to really worry about my health, and my health really felt bad. Then one day, a man just walked up to me because this is the universe. When you really want to learn something, it sends people and resources to you. Yes. So he told me just leave meat alone. When he told me that, I was so desperate at the time I did it right away. And sure enough, as I changed my diet and went to something lighter, I began to see myself lose weight. I began to feel better, and that right there, I could say, started my journey dealing with different types of food in relationship to my body. How long ago was oh. that beginning? This was about 18 years ago. Wow. Just a few decades. Wow. Wow. So to tell about people's journey, usually when the the system is invisible until it goes down. So just like anybody, when you're when you get in trouble mentally or physically, that's when you start seeking answers. 
So when I seen that magic take place on my body, I began to seek higher level uh, diet changes. So I went and learned more about live and raw foods, dealing with the enzymes. Uh, then I began to learn more about meditation. And this is what led me to be who I am now in a uh, Qigong and meditation master. Of course, everybody, they learn the little things about the energy centers, the chakras, but then it's about taking it seriously, yeah. really putting it to work for you. Yes. And that's what I did. <laughs> so over a period of time, I've seen these different meditations really improve my health, opening up these energy centers and channels, and I understood that there's something to this. There's a relationship on meditation, and it should bring forth health, and also coupled with diet. So as I put all of this together, one day I'm proud of myself because I'm 80% live and raw foods. And this woman walked up to me and said, oh, but there's breatharians. There's people who don't live without food. And I said, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> I got to go find out more about this. Now, in my mind, there was no doubt that this was uh, impossible because I've already seen the magic of changing my lifestyle. I've already seen the magic of working with energy. Mm -hmm. So I, w I was not a skeptic at all. I wanted to go and make this happen, but I wanted to go find more information. So immediately I went on the internet and at that time, close to two decades ago, uh, there wasn't that much information like it is today. Right. And I make that happen too, to put as much information out there as possible so people won't have to go through what I went through. Right. But anyway, I did was lucky enough to find a book by Jasmine Heen dealing with living on light in the 21 day process. Real good writing of the time, which helped me to get where I'm at now. So anyway, as I read the book and really got into it, the only difficulty I had was due to my life at the time, just starting a job, getting married, I could not take 21 days off. Mm -hmm. Oh, what am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. But I remember by me putting this application and diet, seeing these improvements, uh, me exploring energy work, the different forms of it, dealing with the energy centers, chakras, nadis, really learning all of this and what this is about. I realized that I have access to energy, it's free, and with will and dedication and the right knowledge, I can make this happen. So I took the process of actually lightening up my diet, uh, bringing in more energy and chi within the body in my lifestyle, not overdoing it not starving yourself, really going deeper into listening to my body. Mm -hmm. And each stage I went to, the way, the indication you know you're bringing more energy into your body is by your health. That's an indicator. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't go backwards. You shouldn't look anorexic. You should be able to get energetically stronger, physically stronger. Do you understand? <laughs> That's so good. Just in preparation of the 21 day process, you started just really focusing on optimizing your energy system first before you even entered the 21 day process. Absolutely. Yeah. Because the thing very about that. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And some man just asked me yesterday about the 21 day process versus the uh, process I was just telling you about, about lightening up your diet. Yes. I said they're combined. Because eventually, if you stay on the process of working on yourself and working on your health, you do have the ability, of, eventually, you're going to meet a 21-day process and beyond. Because you have the ability to bring a higher light quotient into the body where you will eat very less or none at all. Now, for those who don't know what breatharianism is or it is new to them, it's not about leaving food alone altogether. And actually, food is a small aspect of what we're talking about, on bringing more light into the body. Mm -hmm. A breatharian is basically a person who has worked towards living a stress-free life, physically, emotionally, and mentally. When that stress leaves the body, it automatically brings more light into the body. And what we mean by that is because we are part of nature, your body of self-sustaining. And once you become more in alignment with nature, it automatically, naturally will bring more light into the body. And by you knowing that you can take us to that direction now, before we didn't know. So there was this roof on us. But now you're saying, I can bring this in for my health, wellness, and well-being, and it will better your whole life. And the indicators you'll see is better health, mental clarity, 
and you will actually be happy because health, light, and living on prana is all happiness down the board. And that's usually what human beings seek in order to live a good life. <laughs> wow. Okay, so you created a really powerful foundation of taking beautiful care of your health. You are already raw, most 80% raw, 100% vegan. Right. And Absolutely. meditating lots, taking great care of your health before Absolutely. you started the 21-day process. Before I even started it. And due to the uh, group I was with, I was with a, a Hebrew group at the time that had, they kept the Shabbat and in their policy, it was fasting once a week. So therefore, I also had that in my lifestyle. Now to tell you about that, when people call me now about what should I begin, where should I do, I tell them immediately to fast once a week. What that does, it works discipline within the mind. Uh, try to keep a set day. And usually when you come in just fasting once a week in your lifestyle, um, at first it, it's hard. You know, start where you're at. But over a period of time, your body will get used to that new cycle. And you'll find yourself not eating, not drinking, going through a whole day and it become easy. That's another indication that light, more light is into your body. So we do have a body intelligence and we are creatures of habits. When you start developing a new habit, of course it always starts out awkward, but over a period of time that habit becomes easy, simple, and then you could work on taking more days. Too many people find out that you can live without eating or they'll learn about it and they want to immediately take all these big days like they're going to become a breatharian. It does not work like that because it's working on a physical level, it's working on us emotionally, on a cellular level, cleaning out old traumas. This is all part of the process. Not eating is a byproduct of you're working on your emotional and mental condition. Yes. Hallelujah. Of, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> a lot of people have to understand this yeah. because I, I got to say this, the last uh, 21 day processes, and I'm not stepping on nobody's toes, have been kind of failures at the time because people were just coming focusing on the food aspect and they were just doing fast, prolonged fast, wondering why they're not being sustained by the forces. Yes. That brings up controversy because what it does is um, say that there's something wrong with the process. People are lying. But you got to keep in mind that our bodies does not lie. Our bodies always tell the truth with nature. Even lie detector tests and psychologists will tell you this. Yeah. So the body matrix is always telling the truth on how it's coordinating with nature. Mm -hmm. So when you start working and aligning this body matrix, it will naturally bias nature, because that's what it does, bring more light into the body. This is what it's all about. Really deeply working on ourselves and trusting yourself because the truth is in us. <laughs> wow. Okay. So then you went ahead and did the 21 day process, which traditionally you take 21 days off completely right. to do this prolonged fasting practice, but you couldn't do that. You were newly married. You had a little kid already at that time. Absolutely. Yes. Work to provide for your family. So you worked a normal life. That is amazing. Yes. While you did the 21 day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And see, some of the things about it, when you take on something new like this, let's just go back to when I became a vegan and uh, I left the meat salon and I began to lose weight. Yes. Um, I lost like 20 pounds from like 190 to 170, which was normal, which was good in the eyes of the medical profession and myself. Mm -hmm. But the people around me back then, due to that was different, said, uh, you lost too much weight. You're sick. Because in their reality, that was not supposed to happen. So you always would get something on that type of level. So even when I brought more live and raw foods in, you know, people's belief system is you only could get B12 and B6 from eating meats. <laughs> but right now, that's from a couple decades till now, it's become a reality more and more across the line. We defeated that. But even when I want live and raw foods, I lost like another 20 pounds. Uh, kilos, I don't know how that's converted. I'll get it one day. <laughs> but anyway, 
I was still normal to the live and raw community, but for people around me, oh, you lost too much weight. They had to get used to seeing my new pattern. Once they got used to seeing it, now they say he's healthy. But it took a while when that uh, new vision or that new body that you brought out, sort of like carving a sculpture out of a tree, oh, something's wrong with it because people didn't see it before. Now I'm down to 120 pounds, which is amazing. Still in my BMI from 190 to 120, and I'm food free. The body, the way you know it's getting more prana in the body, you would uh, gain more energy. Therefore, you'll sleep less, and therefore your weight would become uh, stagnant, where it won't go no lower. Mm -hmm. That shows you how much light you're bringing into the body. Those are the indicators right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So how do you deal with your own doubting thoughts as you go through the transition? Because you're kind of like straddling the old world and the new world. And sometimes you, you, you have doubts. Is this really working? I, I would like to believe that right. I can transition lighter, lighter, lighter. But no, <laughs> the media starts telling you, you got to eat meat. You know, um, right. what advice do you have for those of us to, to feel confident that we're on the right path? I'm glad you brought that up because this is a big question that comes up. Breatharian or living a pranic lifestyle is like an advanced yoga. When you go to stretch your leg, you're going to go to your limit where you're doing just enough to get that energy flowing and really work on the tension, mm -hmm. but not too much where you hurt yourself. Yes. Oh, over a period of time when you come back, you'll find out that you could go down even lower. But again, you put enough tension that you could get a good workout, but back up, not to hurt yourself. Always remember everything you do on transforming yourself, even if it's for the better, you always got to keep in mind safety first. When you start challenging yourself at that type of level, your doubt and your unbelief and your fear will naturally leave because you've seen that you just did this work on your own. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Too many people go too fast and that's why all these injuries, um, these doubts and unbeliefs and fear is there because you're trusting somebody else's div divinity or their walk, and you're not really putting yourself to a true challenge. Yes. But this is why this is sort of like a advanced yoga, an advanced Tai Chi. You stay consistent and watch the energy work for you. And just uh, you could need some type of you want to enjoy the journey. So, of course, still enjoy those foods that you love until your body energetically makes that change. You will know it will. Again, the truth is in you. And your old desire, yes, there's some good tasting foods out there. That's a desire. And it brings forth craving. But the more you stay consistent with the light, your ego, which is your physical body, which is a program, will automatically start shifting to that new feeling, that new light that comes in, and it will override that old feeling that food gave you. And that's a good thing. The ego is just shifting itself, but it's due to consistency, consistency, consistency. And take it easy and enjoy yourself. Continue this fascinating conversation with us by visiting www.thedreshow.com. That's the D-R-E-Show.com. See you there.